Shalom, everyone. Blessings to you, Baruch Hashem family, and anyone else who's watching this. Tonight, we are celebrating our first Seder. Uh, we celebrate Pesach every year so that we can remember God's great deliverance of our people Israel out of the land of Egypt, out of slavery, uh, and into freedom. So usually we go through the Seder, which means the order of service, with uh, a book like this. This is a traditional family Haggadah, Haggadah, which is good. This is a Messianic Jewish Haggadah or Haggadah. Uh, this is the one we usually use in our family. Uh, one reason why, why we use it is because it's a really good one. But it's also one of the authors of this happens to be Elliot Clayman, who is a relative of ours through marriage. So we like that one. Anyway, we always have a Seder plate like this. Well, this is an unusual Seder plate. It's made out of stone. Uh, it comes from Israel. It's a beautiful plate. It usually has like, well, we do have little glass bowls that fit in here holding all the ceremonial items. And the ceremonial items uh, include a shank bone of a lamb, bitter herbs. I don't think the Israelites were able to buy this uh, in a jar. Uh, and we usually have fresh bitter herb, fresh horseradish, but uh, we don't have it for right now. We just have this. Bubbies. And matzah. Matzah unleavened bread that we were commanded to eat. Uh, there are other things on the uh, in a traditional Seder as well, but I wanted to boil it down to those three items, even though we do gauge our Seder by four glasses of wine. We always have parsley, which may symbolize different things. In this case, we could say it symbolizes the hyssop that was dipped in the blood that brought uh, protection. We put the blood on the doorposts, the lintel of the of the houses, and when the destroyer came into Egypt to bring judgment over Egypt, he would see the blood on the houses of Israel, and he would skip over or pass over that house with judgment, and Israel was saved from the last and tenth worst plague, the death of the firstborn. Uh, we often have beautiful items like the Seder plate I just mentioned to you, like a, a matzah tosh bag that holds matzah. I'm not going to explain that all to you, but I just want to talk about unleavened bread, the lamb shank bone, and the bitter herbs. By the way, if you, if you didn't get to the store to buy a commercial matzah, commercially made matzah, you can make your own matzah at home. Uh, whether you have, it, you can look it up. You can Google it or you can look it up to see how to make matzah. But anyway, I made an attempt to make some matzah and here's one of mine. Uh, I happen to make it with sweet potato. Just has sweet potato and flour, that's all. Um, so what's the big deal about Pesach? Well, the big deal is that we, God has given this to us as a perpetual celebration or observance because we are called to remember his great deliverance of our people out of Egypt. Uh, the wonderful thing about Messianic Jewish, a Messianic Jewish perspective is that we also realize that we can uh, not only apply it, but it should be fulfilled and applied to Yeshua, our Messiah, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now, Pesach 
is not the holiday that brings atonement. The Day of Atonement brings atonement, but Yeshua fulfills both of these. And uh, I don't have the time on this video to share that whole, uh, all of that with you, the whole story, but I will share about Pesach. On the Seder plate, we have the, the lamb shank bone, which is what we have as Ashkenazi Jews. Sephardic Jews actually eat lamb. Uh, lamb is at the table. So we get these instructions mostly from Exodus chapter 12. God says, speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying on the 10th day of the month, they are each to take a lamb and they slaughter the lamb at twilight. And uh, on the 14th day of the month, which is, which begins tonight, uh, here in the Dallas area anyway, Israel has already experienced it. They're eight hours ahead of us. So we have the lamb, which is a very key and central part of the Seder. Uh, in verse, chapter 12, verse 8, and they shall eat the flesh of the lamb, that same night, roasted with fire, and they shall eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. So, eat it with unleavened bread, bread without leaven, and bitter herbs. Bitter herbs. This, In this case, horseradish. Sometimes people do use some sort of bitter herb that's green. Uh and so those are the basic three elements. And even Rabbi Gamliel said the, the things that are absolutely necessary at the Seder are the lamb, the matzah, and the bitter herbs. So I want to talk about that a little bit. The bitter herbs reminds us of the bitterness of slavery. Now, all of us... Ironically, this Seder, tonight's Seder, we have been sequestered in our homes, but tonight in Israel, there's a law that's been passed. You have to be in your, own, in your home at 6 p.m., that's before sundown, and you can't leave until morning. In fact, they've extended that ordinance for four days, so I'm not even sure anybody can leave until uh, for four days. However, if you need to go outside in the morning, you can. But they did it for different reasons. They did it so that the coronavirus will not be spread during Passover when all the families get together. So this year, our family can't get together. So we are each having our own Seder. And each of our families at Brook Hashem is having his or her own Seder. You're having your own Seder, I hope. Uh, but the bitter herbs reminds us of the bitterness of bondage and the bitterness of the last plague, which is, or all the 10 plagues. The last plague being the death of the firstborn. That was a bitter pill to swallow. But that, that's the judgment that comes over the world system, particularly here we see it in, in over Egypt. So the lamb blood, the blood of the lamb was to be shed and put on our doorposts and our lintel. And when the judgment came, the destroyer would pass over when he saw, when God saw the blood, but it was a sign for us. Exodus 12 tells us, a sign for us, but God would see it. This to me really relates to Yeshua. Yeshua had to swallow the bitter pill of sacrifice for sin but he brought us deliverance through it. We have a great deliverance in our Messiah, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, but brings us deliverance, brings us out of bondage. And so we are sim that's symbolized by the lamb shank bone. We remember Yeshua. We remember what God did for us in Egypt 3,500 years ago. By the way, this is the first Seder in 3,500 years where we've been commanded to stay at home. Uh, it, was the ha it happened on the first Seder when God commanded everyone, Moses commanded everyone to stay in their homes. Don't go out of your homes all night. And it's happening today because of the coronavirus. Interesting, isn't it? 
This is also a symbol of Yeshua, which is bread, unleavened bread. Yeshua is the bread of life, and he was born in Bethlehem, the house of bread. Uh, and he is without sin. Yeshua could actually deliver us and was worthy to atone for our sins because he himself is without sin and was chosen of God to do that very thing. So I want to encourage you tonight, well, actually today, this morning, I want to encourage you that God has made a provision and he will make a provision. He continues to provide for us. He doesn't just do it once. He does it always, every day, every moment, all the days of our lives. God is a great deliverer and a great provider. Be encouraged. The coronavirus will end. God's great delivering power will remain, and he will remain close to us. So let's seek his face. Hag Pesach Sameach. Have a wonderful, happy Passover Seder. We bless you from our household to yours. God bless you.